Hello students of Jackson Madison County. This is Mr. Riney from Liberty Tech High School and I'll be reading the texts that come with your packets that you're handed out or you pick up at your local schools or you download from Mr. Gennaro's website. Today I'll be reading from Packet 2, the second text in Packet 2, called Experts Debate, Will Computers Edge People Out of Entire Careers? by David Kestenbaum, 2015. I want to point out that this text is an interview and it's written in the form of a play almost. Since it's an interview, there's going to be a couple of people talking. There's the host of the show, Renee Montaigne. There's one of the people in the interview, David Kestenbaum. And there's another one, Andrew McAfee. I'm going to scroll through here and see if there's any other names that we need to take a look at in here. There's David Autor. And that seems to be it. So whenever a person's first mentioned, it gives their full name and who they are. Full name here. And full name here. From the rest, for the rest of the time, it only refers to them by their last name. So David Kestenbaum is Kestenbaum from now on. And Andrew McAfee is simply McAfee from now on. Let's begin. Experts Debate. Will Computers Edge People Out of Entire Careers? By David Kestenbaum, 2015. Periods of rapid technological development have long been accompanied by fears of job loss. Workers might be replaced directly by machines or indirectly by changes in the economy. Experts have differing opinions on the effects of technological advances in the workplace. As you read, note the arguments of different experts and track how they support their arguments. Machines have been taking jobs forever. Computers and softwares are doing things people were paid to do. They are booking airline flights, filing our taxes, and they are getting better all the time. Renee Montaigne, host. Given that computers and software are doing things lots of people used to do, like booking our airplane flights and filing our taxes and getting better all the time, it's worth worrying about how many jobs will be left a few decades from now. David Kestenbaum with Our Planet Money team reports there is real debate over that question. David Kestenbaum, byline. It's one thing to talk about computers taking jobs. But looking out a few decades, people are talking about entire careers disappearing. If you're listening to this story driving an 18-wheeler on I-80, 18-wheeler on I-80, this thought has probably already occurred to you. Andrew McAfee. We've got cars that can drive themselves on roads in traffic without mishap. Kestenbaum. Andrew McAfee is a professor at MIT. He's definitely, definitely in the jobs are going away camp. McAfee. The accidents that Google just reported that happened with their autonomous cars happened because other people rear-ended them and swerved into them. Kestenbaum. Truck drivers in this country, almost 2 million jobs. Cashiers, 3 million. McAfee. It turns out people like self-service a lot. I don't want to talk about somebody when I go, I don't want to talk to somebody when I go check in at an airport. I just either download the boarding pass to my phone or walk up to a kiosk and get it. Don't forget these terms here will help you understand the highlighted terms above. Kestenbaum. McAfee does not think computers will have anything like human intelligence in the near future, but he says, if you just take where we are going now and extrapolate to him, it's clear where we're headed. McAfee. 20 or 40 years from now, I believe we will not need the labor of a lot of the people alive in order to have a very, very productive economy. In terms of the amount of human labor that you need to get the stuff out of the ground and off the farms and through the factories and into our homes and tables, next to none. Kestenbaum. You do not have to go far to find someone who disagrees with Andrew McAfee. Just around the corner to the office of another person at the same university. 
David Autor. My name is David Autor. I'm a professor of, econ of economics and associate head of the MIT Department of Economics. Kestenbaum. David Alter has been making the opposite case, the chill out. There will be plenty of jobs case. He questions the idea that computers and software will continue to get exponentially better. Autor. It's hard to know how fast things will change. I mean, that's our first point. Kestenbaum. Okay, he says, robots can drive cars, but they still struggle with very basic tasks like folding laundry. Autor. The set of things that machines do not do like humans is innumerable. Kestenbaum. And, he says, people have been worried about this forever, that machines will take away all the jobs. But those people have always been wrong, partly because they missed some basic economics. When the tractor came along, yes, it eliminated, eliminated a lot of farming jobs, but it also made food cheaper, which meant people had more money to spend, and new opportunities, and new jobs. Autor. So I feel it would be rather arrogant of me to say I looked at the future, and people won't come up with stuff. I don't know. I'm humbled by the fact at how bad I would have been at predicting the future. Kestenbaum. I asked Andrew McAfee about this. David's argument is that people have been saying this is going to happen forever, and it just never has. McAfee. He's absolutely right. The Luddites said that. Marx predicted it with great confidence. John Maynard Keynes, who's one of my intellectual heroes, talked about it in the 1930s. All these people are listed down here, by the way. Kestenbaum. So does it feel crazy for you to be saying, no, 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 this time, this time I mean it, and I'm right? McAfee. Yeah, you know, you wonder if you're joining that long litany of voices who go down as having made the incorrect prediction one more time. But I think the facts are different this time. Kestenbaum. In the past, he says, Machines were basically doing mechanical stuff. This time around, they're doing things that seem much more human. They can talk. They can listen. They can even compose music. Good job, computer. David Kestenpalm, NPR News.